Welcome everyone. Very happy to have you here. Today is April 12th and this is my second live stream today. I did one at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, I thought I'd do another one at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for those of you unable to watch um, at 1 p.m. Eastern. So um, welcome everyone. Hi Martha from Florida. Hi Brandon. Um, yeah, so, um, I will recap a little bit of, uh, some of the things I talked about at this afternoon's live stream. So if you watched that one, um, I apologize for the repeat information. I won't repeat everything I talked about, um, this afternoon, but, um, I did want to, uh, share my, uh, upcoming teaching um, engagements. So, um, let's see. Come on. Um, so the, uh, first, uh, event I will be teaching at, um, is coming up soon. It will be April 22nd through 24th, and that is a virtual conference, the next level knitting conference with TKGA. And so this, uh, tickets are still on sale. They will be on sale, um, through April 20th. The, uh, ticket is 150 currently and, um, uh, US dollars. Um, you must be a TKGA member to buy a ticket, but, uh, TKGA membership, the Knitting Guild Association membership is $25 for the whole entire year. And that gets you a plethora of benefits. Um, for that very reasonable price, you get uh, quarterly issues of Cast On Magazine. There's a monthly newsletter that I'm the editor of. Um, there are bi monthly uh, virtual guild meetings on Zoom and uh, lots of other uh, benefits to TKJ membership. The next level knitting conference will be three days Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, and it's hosted on a platform called Brella. And the way our conference works is it's one price for your ticket and you get all of the sessions. Now there are some, so on Saturday and Sunday, there are live sessions happening concurrently. So um, there's three, sometimes four sessions happening at the same time. So you have to pick which one you go to live but they are all recorded and posted on the platform shortly after they end. And you will have six months worth of access to all of the recordings. So you can watch any of the sessions that you missed live and you can rewatch as many sessions as you would like. There's also one-on-one um, -on -one networking opportunities. Uh, so you can request a meeting with a fellow knitter and um, at the conference and have a short, like 15 minute, I think they're 15 minute little one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and then there, this year there's also breakout rooms. So there will be breakout rooms running, um, all throughout the weekend. Um, and so you can pop in there, there'll be themed ones for level one, level two, level three of the master hand knitter and so on. But then there will be general breakout rooms too. So you could join in those and Supposedly, they can hold up to 100 people each, so I don't know how it will work. We will see. Um, yes, there is Martha. Um, let me pop this on here. Um, there is homework. So the uh, homework is available on the TKGA website. If you go to uh, events and contests, I think is the tab, and you click on the next level knitting conference, um, there is a link at, uh, a, a link to the schedule PDF and a link to the handouts and supplies. And so some of the sessions do have homework. So it's a good idea to get that printed off and start on your homework. Um, because some of the session, I think, uh, there might be a seaming session and there's quite a few swatches, little swatches that you need to do as homework for that session. Um, and then you can, you know, that'll let you get the most out of those sessions. Um, and then there will also be 
um, two evening socials this year, one on Friday night and one on Saturday night. Friday night will be a fashion show and Saturday night will be a virtual pinning and a social time. So that should be a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to it. To it, The whole board has been putting a lot of work into it. Uh, I will be teaching two sessions. Um, I don't remember which one is on which day, but one is on Saturday and one is on Sunday. Um, matching cast-ons and bind-offs is one, and then sock heels is the other. Um, yeah, so if you don't have your ticket yet, buy your ticket now um, before sales are closed at the end of the day on April 20th. Um, the uh, next event after that I'm really excited about, um, I am teaching at uh, Stitches Expo at Home. This will be my first Stitches event that I'm teaching at. I'm really excited. This is a virtual event, uh, and I will be teaching three classes. Um, the event itself runs the 13th through the 15th. Let me make sure that's right. Yes. Um, my classes are on the 14th and the 15th. Um, on the 14th, I am teaching mirror knitting. On the 15th, I am teaching pattern writing for beginners and um, darn those knits. So those classes are on sale now. Um, if you go to uh, that website, you should be able to get to the classes. Class sizes are limited, so sign up early before classes sell out. There are a wide range of classes available covering multiple different fiber arts um, um, techniques, uh, including crochet and weaving, and I think spinning, quilting. There's, uh, there's at least one or more quilting classes as well. Um, so it's sure to be a really good, um, a really good event, event, and I'm really excited. Um, yeah. So the other thing I want to share with you uh, is some a couple of new patterns that are out. These are not mine. Um, okay. Next slide. All right. This. One is from um, Jennifer Paracini. She has a new pattern out. This is for a shawl slash stole um, piece called Cloud Waltz. Uh, it's soft, floaty, really, really lovely. Um, she writes wonderful patterns. It's available um, on her Ravelry and her PayHip store. So if you check her out on Instagram, she's got a link to her website and where her patterns are available. So check that out. It uses a really soft, fluffy yarn. Um, it's, it's so pretty. And then um, Johanna Kunin has a new pattern out. This is called Beneath Waves tank and it's available um, she's modeling it here in the long length it's available in three lengths a cropped a regular and a, like a tunic length and with or without side shaping um, and so it's kind of hard to see probably from this picture but it's got this really pretty feather fan kind of lace and bobble um, stitch pattern on the front and the back it's it's really nice, and she writes really good patterns too. So, um, and I, I know these designers write good patterns because I tech edit for them. So, um, yeah. So those are a couple of new. And again, you can follow her on Instagram and get to her web page from there to get the pattern. And I believe she also has a pay hip a Ravelry and a pay hip store. Um, anyway, so those are a couple of new patterns out that I wanted to share with you. So let's go back here. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. 
let's see. So, um, let me minimize that. All right. Um, all right. Well, we'll, we'll switch. We'll just get right into the knitting. And if you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat and I will do my best to answer. So this, uh, this afternoon I was working on a lace shawl, um, but this evening I decided to pull out my socks and work on my socks. So these are some rainbow, let me pull up, some rainbow yarn socks, and I did an afterthought heel. Uh, and I'm, I tried it on earlier and I'm ready to Kitchener, but I'm thinking I want to work a couple of decreases on the very ends, the corners, to minimize some little dog ear, the dog ear stuff that you get happening. So I'm going to do that and then I'll Kitchener on here. So... Let's, the yarn's kind of dark, so I don't know if you'll be able to see the stitches very well, but I'm thinking I'm going to, I haven't tried this before, but so my decreases are four stitches in, um, my regular, you know, decreases for the side of this heel. I think I want to work two a set of two decreases um, here in this corner. And then I'll do that. So I'll do these as two knit two togethers. And I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll see after I Kitchener it. Okay. I'm having trouble seeing. There we go. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> yeah. You, c you can never, you know, you always need those directions handy. It's a good idea to have those directions handy. So then here I'll do two SSKs, or I work them as SKPs. And these DPNs. I usually knit with my knitting up, you know, closer here. So working down on this table top with the DPNs is not very comfortable. Okay, so there's one half. Now let's get the other half and we'll see how this looks as I Kitchener. Hopefully it'll do what I'm thinking. Try to stay in frame. Okay. Knit two. This is, so the, the yarn, I'm trying to remember which yarn this rainbow yarn is. Um, I, I don't remember. I'm, th hmm, let me see if I logged it on Ravelry. I will bring up Ravelry really quick. And go to my projects. Is that these? Hmm. No, those are different ones. I didn't log these. I th I th oh. It's either nitpicks Felici, but I feel like it's not that. I I'm thinking it might be mustache yarn. Um one of their rainbows. And then I have no idea what this was. I think this was the blue. Let me find it. I think this was the blue I used in my Wonder Woman shawl that I still have to 
uh, weave in the ends on. Did I put that? It's here somewhere. Well, I can't find it. I think it's the blue I used in Wonder Woman shawl, which I think this is a Malabrigo color. Um, I am not positive. So then I'll do two decreases there and then work across. And then I'll have to see if I can find the ball bands. Somewhere I have the ball bands. I don't know if I have the ball band for this blue handy, but I should have the ball band for the rainbow. And then I'll knit to the side. Okay, now I will slip these to one needle. Okay, now get this set up and find my scissors, get enough of a tail, find my tapestry needle. All right. So some people skip the setup step to try to avoid the dog ears, but I, I don't. I tend to not worry about it. So I'm going to do my setup steps and get closer. Pearl on the front because my yarn's coming from the back. Get that yarn under that needle. And then knit on the back. Oh, thank you, Brandon. So mustache yarn in Martian rainbow and then the blue, oops, I just did it. And the blue is Malabrigo sock and, Mat oops, what did I do? And Matisse blue, I missed this stitch. Okay. All right, let's undo. Undo, undo. What happened? Okay. I'm not quite sure what happened. Okay, so I'm going to purl on this stitch and I'm going to knit on this. There we go. Now, now I'm going to knit off and purl on, and then purl off and knit off. And I just leave it loose and I come back around and fix it. Ooh. Knit off, purl on, knit off, or purl off, knit off. Uh, at this point, for stockinette, it's kind of muscle memory for me, so I don't even really think about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is helpful to, uh, here, let me, uh, let me that up. Yep, it is helpful to be somewhere by yourself with no distractions, so you don't get interrupted. I try to make sure I repeat, at least repeat both steps on one needle before I set it down. I try to not set it down at all in the middle. So at least if both steps are complete on one needle, 
I can know to move to the next needle. But ideally, ah, somebody's calling me. Who's calling me? <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> yes, one. I I believe it was like one of our first knit nights. I brought. I was working a. a I believe I was working on an Aeolian shawl. Um, by Elizabeth Freeman and with beads and everything and I brought it to the coffee shop and worked on that during knit night. My infamous knit night lace beading. <laughs> Hopefully, I have the right number of stitches. I should have checked that. I'm thinking I don't. That, uh... Well, maybe... No, something's not right. I don't have enough stitches. So we might be undoing a Kitchener and redoing it. That seemed right. Maybe it'll be right. Yeah, this is not right. Okay, so let's see here. We shall, ah, and of course it's this dark blue yarn. We are going to fix a Kitchener. Uh, I may have to uh, bring it up to my. So, I needed to remove my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, you can see, you can also see what I'm doing. Where is this thing? There we go. Okay. Let's get there. So I'll try to catch these strands. I maybe need to break out some wooden deep ends that are not quite so slippery. Yeah, let me do that. So these are zeros. Let me see if I can find. I'm not sure where my wooden deep ends are. Ah. Know that these are zeros. But maybe they'll work. They're a little too big, but they'll work. So then the stitches won't slide everywhere. And I can't catch them. Mm 
Yeah. So yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. Let me repair this and then I will break out my knitting and I can show you how I do noops. I think I ended up doing that alien shawl three times. I did one, uh, in burgundy with clear beads. And then I did one in a blue alpaca. Um, I think it was alpaca silk. This stitch is hiding right there. And I can't remember if I did a third one. And then this stitch is hiding right there. Not sure. Once I get these all picked up, I'll have to see my stitch count. My stitch count must have been wrong. Right. There. There. And then this. Hopefully, I'm staying in the uh, camera frame. I can't read my chat. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Copper colored silk blend with copper beads. Ooh, that sounds really pretty. All right, let's see. And then here. And Oh, it looks like I did this stitch twice, maybe. Yes, I did this stitch twice. See, I was distracted. Oh, well, I did it twice on the pearl side, too, though. Looks like it anyway, maybe not. I don't know. We're about halfway. So even master knitters make mistakes. No one's perfect. Let's see. Oh, I'll share my good news about my missing package. If you followed me on Instagram, you will have seen that I that a package was missing, and it was my um, two garments for Cast On Magazine that needed to arrive by Monday, this last Monday, for the photo shoot. And I had mailed them last Monday and saw them get picked up I, I did package pickup. They got picked up by not my regular postal worker. 
and not scanned and then promptly disappeared and never had tracking information on it. And it was missing for, I think, like 10 days, nine days, something like that. I was freaking out. I started knitting a second headband because I had enough yarn left and I was planning on do taking the photographs myself here for that but I had no more not enough yarn left to do the men's best over again and not enough time to do the men's best over again and I hadn't taken the time to take good photos before I mailed it off and believe me I will not do that again I will make sure I take good photos um, but it was uh, all of a sudden sudden turned up in the uh, in the tracking system uh, a couple of days ago I think uh, Saturday night and um, moved through the system fast and got to where it was going um, today I think um, and so Arenda's going to bring the photographer back so that they can take pictures of my garments, which is very nice of her to do. Um, and I'm very relieved. Almost. Almost done with undoing this Kitchener. Okay, this one's being a pest. Let's see. Where are you? There you are. I have new glasses on their way to me. I'm hoping I can see better with my new glasses. I hadn't been to the eye doctor since before the pandemic hit, so my um, prescription was a little bit out of date. All right, let's see. Um, I'll come like this and then pick this one up. Come out of here. Almost there. Then we'll see what I did wrong. Let's see. Um, thinking. What did I do? So there's a stitch there. That should be the last one for this side. I can get that there, and this one should be the last one for this side. My hair's getting in there. Um, but oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, oh, there was another one, perhaps, right here, maybe, looks like, let's put that on there, and we will see. So I had, oh. Oh, thank you, Martha. Let me pull up. Where is it? Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Um, um, let's see. Now that I have my glasses back on, let me see what you guys have said. Um, those are cute little hippos. Um, 
And I thank you very much for the super chat. You're very kind. Um, so let's see what I did wrong here and I'll count my stitches. So I have those two, that should be right. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then on this side, double check. Gotta take my glasses off again. So yeah, I've got my two decreases and my two decreases there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think I messed up when I started and this stitch dropped off the needle when it needed to not have. So I feel like There's, let me put them back on here. So they're easier to work. That's okay, Martha. I like the little hippos. Those are cute. And then uh, it's like it's missing. Is it twisted? I think it's twisted and it's missing a being worked. I feel like. So I'm just gonna work that now. So I did have the right number of stitches. I just, when I started it, that first stitch slipped off the needle or something. I thought I had fixed it, but I hadn't. So I was off by a whole stitch. Oops, now this stitch dropped. <laughs> there we go. I was off by a whole stitch as I worked across and didn't realize it until I got to the end. All right, so that's how you undo. <laughs> how you undo Kitchener, maybe that was helpful. Um, let me grab my other knitting and I'll show Martha how to, how I do my noobs. And then we'll set this kitchener to the side and let it kind of think about what it did wrong and, uh, and come back to it. <laughs> so let me see. Here's my swatch from earlier um, today. Let me work a couple rows across to get away from all of this bunched up knitting underneath it. And that was my very first super chat too, by the way. So I thank you very much. Okay, I'll purl across here and then we will do some noops. I'm working, uh, this is worsted weight yarn, but it is lace tip needles, so. I will do five stitch noops. Okay, let's get these tails out of the way. Yes, I do. Um, I've been doing um, a live stream once a month, and this is the first time I've done two live streams. Um, I wanted to try to do a Saturday evening live stream, but this month is super jam-packed with stuff. So there wasn't really a Saturday free. So I decided to do an evening stream on the same day I did my afternoon stream. So I think next month 
uh, I'm planning on live streaming um, on May 17th. Um, I'm in the afternoon at 1 p.m. I'm not sure when I will try to do an evening stream in May. I haven't decided yet. Um, okay, so uh, let's say I'll get a little closer. Let's say I want to do a noop right here. Um, so how I work my noops is I use double yarn overs for every yarn over. So if I'm doing a five stitch noop, I knit one, I double yarn over, I knit one. So that's stitch number three, double yarn over, that's stitch number four, and knit one, and that's stitch number five. And then, you know, work across like normal. And then when you come back around, um, I, I always pull my knitting to make sure I'm not knitting any of those um, noop stitches yet. So there's one stitch before the noop. And then I, um, doing the double yarn overs, then I drop the extra yarn over. Um, and I count my loops at the same time, so it kind of serves double purpose so that I can make sure I'm only getting my noop loops and not um, the any of the stitches on either side. So I slip them and count um, as I drop the extra yarn overs. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I pull, and there's extra room now that double yarn over, those double yarn overs provided just enough extra room so I can easily slip that stitch in, the needle in, and purl all of those together. And so that's how I do my noops. And it makes it so I don't want to stab someone when I'm coming back to try to purl all of those together. And it does, um, let me pull out the shawl I was working on earlier today. Um, if I can come a little farther, let me switch to my blue background. Since this is white, find the right side of it. Okay, um, so this is in lace weight yarn, but um, it does make the noops a little bit more enlarged than, you know, the traditional method of just the yarn overs. Um, but I find I don't mind that they're a little bit larger than they would be otherwise because it's quicker and not as, um, you know, frustratingly, you know, aggravating <laughs> trying to work those um, on the return row. So yeah, so that's how I work my noops. Yay. I'm, I'm glad that was, that is helpful for you, Martha. Maybe you will, um, feel like working that Aeolian shawl again. Yeah. I kind of like that they're larger too. Um, it, it, uh, you know, they're, they're larger without, you know, without, let's see if I can find one in here, you know, they're larger without being sloppy, you know. So until I learned that method, I was just, I really did not like noops, but now I love noops. All right, we'll try this Kitchener stitch again. Okay, so I'm coming from the back needle. I need to come to the front needle first and purl that first stitch. And then to the back, I knit that first stitch and not drop it this time. Let me count again just to be sure. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Okay. Now I can knit purl here. I would love to see the, the 
copper, the copper shawl with the copper beads. That just sounds really gorgeous to me. So if you do make it, I'd love to see progress pictures or finished pictures. Because I think that would be just so pretty. Hopefully this time it will work right. Oh, awesome. I'll, I'll write that down, Martha. And, um, okay. That sounds very good. I can't wait to see it. Front needle. Oh, I'll have to take a look. Um, let me finish this kitchener, and then I will pull up Ravelry and look. Okay, I'm gonna count. Six and six, okay. I think we're on track. Wonder of wonders. Stay down. Okay. Four stitches, four stitches. Three and three. Almost there. One left here. Yeah, it's 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 taking uh, quite a bit of concentration to to talk and not mess up at the same time. Okay, then knit off and purl off. Okay. Hard bits done. Now, let me pull this up here. And I then start from the side I started on. And I stitch leg by leg, tighten. Might be hard to see in this dark blue yarn. I wonder if I can, if lightening up my camera will help at all. Maybe? My goal is to get these the same size as the surrounding stitches. Mm -hmm. 
My, my watch is buzzing at me for some reason. Okay. So, allergy season is in full swing here in North Carolina. So my nose keeps running even though I've taken allergy medicine. The tree pollen is crazy. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. A um, couple more loops there, and then that one. Yay! Then, uh, so I think that maybe did. Uh, let me see. Well, I don't know if my sock blockers would show it, but I'm. Um, hopeful that adding those decreases there will kind of make that heel be, I think it's a little more rounded. So that while it's being worn, there's not these little bits sticking out on my heels. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Yay. All right. So that was Kitchenering. That was like uh, messing up Kitchenering and then fixing Kitchenering. <laughs> So one sock is done. My other sock, let me see if I have the ball band. No, the ball band's not in here with the other sock. Oh, but we had determined it was mustache yarn. So the other sock is ready for its heel. Right there is my afterthought um, place, waist yarn placement. So it will get a matching heel. So there's those. Um, alrighty, let me put my tapestry needle back where it goes so I don't lose it. There we go. And figure out what I want to work on next. Well, I could pick up the stitches from my heel. Why don't I do that? Um, let's see. Well, I'm going to have to remove my glasses to do that. So I'm going to not do that. We're almost at an hour. So let me, I will work a wrong side row on my shawl, my shawl for a little bit. There's my yarn. There's my yarn. Okay. Because I finished a right side row this afternoon. It's all a big mess. Where's my alright? So now I can work the wrong side row. And this had the right side row I worked had some noops in it. Where is this yarn going from? Oh, there we go. In the center panel, I think there were some noops. So if I work fast, I can get across and resolve some of these noops. All right. So this is my Water Lilies shawl from uh, the Knit Picks book Ethereal, I think is what it was called. Um, and the um, the way Knit Picks works for their book publications is um, I didn't need to knit the sample. They hire a sample knitter. So um, I had started my sample and uh, and had gotten a good ways on it, but never finished my sample. And then other deadline knitting came up and I set it aside. So I'm finally working on 
trying to finish my sample. I have uh, four rows and one repeat and one more repeat of this main repeat left and then the edging. Um, so and this is, um, I think we determined it was, it's Knit Picks Shimmer Yarn, which is an alpaca silk. Yes, I would be happy to do short rows, um, garter short rows, and how not to stretch the stitch. Let me write that down. Let me actually get to a stitch where I can set this down. And I will write down garter short rows. I will add that to my um, my live stream notes, and actually, I will add that to my video notes too. And um, I'll try to film a video on that sometime soon. I'm currently um, I'm I'm really proud of myself because I'm uh, I'm ahead in my filming schedule, so I've got. Um, the next like 12 weeks of videos um, filmed, um, not edited ne necessarily. I think I have like five weeks edited and scheduled, maybe six. But um, yeah, so I'm like way ahead of um, my filming in my filming schedule, and which has been making it. Uh, let so much less stressful. Um, I can have other deadline things that I'm working on and I don't, um, and I can still put a video out every week um, and not feel really stressed about it. So, okay, so you've done, let me, let me put that, I'll put that chat up there. Um, three butterfly shawls, which, um, you love, but the stitches stretch on the short rows. Okay, so I will definitely address that, either uh, in a live stream or a video or both. I'm glad you like my videos. That makes me happy. I would work, be working a little bit faster if I was able to pull my knitting closer to me, where my arms are more comfortable. I'm a little slow here on the camera. Arms over here. There we go. Well, that's good. I'm glad it's nice to watch. I feel like maybe I'm being boring or something. <laughs> Let me turn the brightness back down a little. And my needle keeps um, these interchangeables. I tend to forget to snug them up with the little tightening key and then they keep coming loose.
bunched up. I need a little, little bit better. Oh, I'll have to check out the Knitter's Pride Gingers. Um, they're, they have some new ones that just came out or are coming out. Um, now I don't remember what they were called, what they're called, that, um, that looked really pretty and were very tempting. Um, the, the black wood ones, I'm thinking. Or maybe I'm thinking, um, Chow Goo. I know Chow Goo has a new set coming out soon that are an ebony wood with, um, a metal tip. Those look really nice too. That's helpful when the needles can stay snug on their cables. I do have some fixed circulars, but not um, not in the lace sizes. Oh, that's good to know, Martha. The ginger. Knitter's Pride gingers are um, warming on the hands. Okay, I'm almost done with this triangle. Coming up on the second section. Oh, there's a knot. Get that. Uh. Okay. That's not good. Is it one that will go away, or is it one that will not? It will stay knotted. I don't know. There. Oh. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, yeah, interchangeables are great. I love them. All right, these noops are... The loops for the noops are getting hung up. There we go. So, let me get to the... I haven't tried the carbons. I would like to try. They look good. I like, um, since I do a lot of lace and cables, I, I really need a really sharp tip on my needles kind of come to rely on that. It's hard for me to go back to bamboos and um, and needles with dollar tips. All right, so make sure my stitch marker is in the right spot and it didn't move. No, that's right. And there should be seven stitches in this little panel, I think. Three, four, I feel another knot. There's another knot. 
I threw the yarn and the shawl over in my little basket this afternoon and it kind of got all messed up. All right, that's one more. Good. There we go. All right, that should be the last knot there. Oh, oh yeah, bamboo knitting needles. I've I've broken some zeros um, working socks before. That's no fun. And then a plain stitch. Let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then my stitch marker. Now, this section has the noops that I worked on the row before. So I'm going to come around. As I'm working this wrong side row, I'm double checking the pattern, making sure my yarn overs are in the right spot. Okay, there should be two stitches and then a noop. So there's two stitches and then there's my noop. All right, so I did the double yarn over trick on he these, and these were five stitch noops. So one, two, three, four, five. And then shimmy that needle in and purl them together. And then keep going. Three stitches and a yarn over. Yep. Then another three stitches and a yarn over. Three. Yarn over. And then three more in the yarn over. Yeah, it's a it's really it's a lifesaver for noops. It makes them just so much easier. All right, then there should be two stitches, then a noop. Okay, there's my noop. One, two, three, four, five. And I wiggle, wiggle that needle in to the back, purl. And that's all there is to it. You should definitely try them, Brandon. They're fun. Yes, I would second. Let me highlight that. I would second Martha's suggestion of a Nancy Bush shawl pattern. I think, do I have it handy? Yes, because I, I taught a session for a guild recently um, about Estonian stitches. And so I have my a couple of my Estonian shawls handy. And this one is from Nancy Bush's Estonian um, Knitted Lace of Estonia. I did this one. Um, and this is in a lace cashmere, 100% um, cashmere yarn, and it's so soft. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon.
thinking of doing the water lily. You like the designer. The designer's me. And you don't have to make the water lily as big. I, I love designing my lace shawls so that you can make um, them the, they're easy to modify the size. So um, I try to write my lace shawl patterns so that you can work um, pretty much any number of the body stitch pattern before you work the edging. So if you don't want it as large as um, this one's going to be, let me switch here. I mean, this one's going to be, it's not blocked and it's already quite So it's already quite large. Um, once it's blocked, it's going to be um, really big. So if you don't want it that big, you don't have to make it that big. Um, I'll do a little bit more across this row, and then I think we will wrap it up. Um, I'm at my noop, so one, two three, four, five, and then insert and purl. I figured you wanted to do a nice big shawl though, Brandon. This one's very conducive to being nice and big. And it's available at um, as an individual download at the Nitpicks website. You can search for my name on the nitpick site or um, go to my designer page on Ravelry and find my designs. Find it there. It's called the Water Lily Shawl. It made the cover of the book. I was very uh, pleased. All right, I like big, <laughs> I like big knits and I cannot lie. I think, I feel like that's probably a universal statement for knitters. Maybe, maybe not. Hello, Toenails on Toast, where are you joining us from? I was about to wrap up the stream, so you've joined us towards the end. I am working. Oh, Martha. Thank you for the super chat. Um, you are so welcome. I'm glad that you were able to um, join us um, this evening since you couldn't join, well, this evening my time, since you couldn't join me when I live streamed earlier today. So I'm very glad, Martha, you, that you were able to hop on here. It's been a pleasant hour or so chatting with you. Um, England, oh, you're up, you're up late, 1.15 a.m. Well, I hope, okay, let me do this noop so I don't get so three, four, five, sorry. I didn't wanna mess up my noob. There we go, there we go, okay. Um, I hope you had a good day uh, up to 1.15 a.m. right now. <laughs> I am um, 
working a wrong side row on a lace shawl. Um, I did the right side row um, earlier today um, during my first live stream today. I did, uh, this is my second live stream today. And uh, so I was working on a sock, but Kitchenering a heel closed on a sock, but now I am working on the wrong side row of a lace shawl. And there are noops in this one. There we go. Okay. Well, does anybody have any uh, last minute questions for me? I will, um, let me um, mention my teaching engagements. Why is the world flat? I don't know why the world is, world is flat. Why is the world flat? The world's round. <laughs> Three, four, five. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, let me um, remind you of my teaching engagements coming up. Um, so coming up April 22nd through the 24th, I will be teaching at the next level. Oops, what happened here? Okay, go back. There we go. Next Level Knitting Conference, um, which is an online conference um, by, um, from TKGA, the Knitting Guild Association. And uh, you, tickets are on sale through April 20th. Uh, they cost 150 US dollars. That gets you um, access to the entire weekend's worth of sessions. There are multiple live sessions happening. Um, they will all be recorded and you will have access for six months to all of the recordings. And there's also social events, um, two live social events and giveaways and the ability to do one-on-one um, -on -one networking as well as um, some breakout rooms and things like that. And there are course sessions um, geared towards all level of knitters. You do not have to be working through the Master Knitter Program to have find something of benefit. Um, the, of course, there are sessions that are um, specifically aimed at people working through the Master Knitter Program, but um, all knitters could find even those sessions helpful as well, because there will be sessions on seaming and there will be sessions on buttonholes and things like that. Um, so definitely buy your ticket if you have not yet, and that is of interest to you. Even if you aren't able to attend that weekend um, live, the ability to watch everything after the fact is really a great benefit and still would be well worth the cost of the ticket. And then in May, one, two, three, four, five, sorry. Um, in May, May 13th, right? Is that the right date? Yeah, 13th through 15th. Um, I will be teaching three classes for Stitches Expo at Home, which is another online uh, ex uh, conference. And um, I'll be teaching mirror knitting on Saturday, the 14th, and pattern writing for beginners and darn those knits on Sunday, the 15th. Uh, class uh, tickets are on sale now. Sizes are limited for those classes. So if you are interested in any of the classes for the Stitches Expo um, event, then it would be a good idea to buy them sooner rather than later so that um, 
you can get a seat before classes sell out. Um, so those are the two places I'm teaching at soon. Um, See, the noops, using that method, they are just not painful at all. Um, all right, let's see, what else? I will be having um, a couple of new designs coming out soon in the next issue of Cast On Magazine, which uh, I'm not sure when it will be ready um, to be published should be uh, a few weeks, a couple weeks or so. Um, and uh, the, the, those will be a headband worked in, I'll show you, do I have the yarn handy? Oh, I don't have it right here. I was gonna show you the yarn, but I don't have it right here. Um, I used Miss Babs, Sojourn, which is a silk blend fingering weight, and then a moon, I think it's called Moon Glow, which is the kid's silk, um, held together, and I did a headband with short row shaping, and um, to go along with an article I wrote on um, stretchy cast on and bind off. Um, so I used a stretchy cast on and bind off on the headband and it turned out really cute. And I uh, used a button. I did a non-functional little button tab with a decorative button on it um, as an optional thing. So look for that soon in the next issue of Cast On Magazine. And then uh, there will also be a men's uh, vest pattern in that issue as well. Um, a nice, uh, really all around um, pattern that uses a wide rib in the body and um, it, uh, and I sized it. I think it goes from like a 30 something chest up to a 64 chest, I believe. Uh, something like that. Um, really nicely size inclusive for um, men or masculine um, leaning people in your life. And uh, yeah, so that will be in the next issue of Cast On Magazine as well. Those are the patterns I have coming up. I have about three other designs that are like all due at the beginning of June, so I'm going to need to get busy on those. I will be having a very busy May, I think. Um, let me get just a few more stitches over here, and then we will wrap it up. Um, Tighten my needle again. Okay. Uh, let me where I want to stop. Not at a yarn over. I'll stop right here. Okay. And then I will pull my needles so that I don't drop anything. And this time I will secure my yarn so it doesn't <laughs> knot up on me. And then there we go. Hello, Godric. Uh, sorry you can't sleep. Um, knitting is a great hobby. Um, it's uh, can be relaxing, or like the right kind of knitting, <laughs> something that isn't aggravating. 
to work on, but uh, yeah, it can be very relaxing and meditative. Um, so um, anyway, let's see anything else I want to recap. Um, Next Level Knitting Conference, buy your ticket. Uh, stitches, classes, um, buy your ticket for those before classes sell out. Where else will I be? Um, I will be in a couple of weeks at the Unwind Getaway Retreat, which is in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. I will be a participant there, though, uh, not a teacher this year. I have taught there um, quite a few years. Um, I It's one of those retreats where... I've come to love the people um, and definitely wanted to, even though I wasn't teaching there this year, I wanted to be there with all of those people. So um, so I will be there and that'll be a change of pace. That'll be uh, the first retreat I've been at in a, since I've been teaching knitting. Um, so 2014, I would guess my first pure retreat where I'm not working um, um, or teaching something. So that will be uh, a change of pace. I'll get to just be there and take classes from other teachers and enjoy myself. I probably won't know what to do with myself, but um, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, uh, what else can I tell you about? Um, not a lot of shows over the summer. Um, I don't think I can announce any other. I do have a couple other teaching engagements, but nothing I can tell you about yet. Um, so um, I'm going to wrap it up, I think. Um, I'm, I'm happy um, that you popped on and joined, joined me. Um, it's been a nice um, evening here um, chatting with you. And um, Martha, I'm really glad you were able to join us. Um, and so my next live stream I have scheduled for May 17th at 1 p.m. Eastern. I will try to add another one um, uh, my, during my evening hours, either that, that night like I did today or a different day. Um, in my evening hours to try to accommodate other folks that can't make it at 1 p.m. Eastern. But I haven't, I don't have that set yet, but look for that. If you subscribe and click the notification bell, then you will get a notification whenever I am live um, and whenever I've posted a new video. I post new videos every Friday on knitting techniques and yeah, so it's been lovely, and I will hopefully see you at uh, online at a knitting conference or a class or at another live stream. So have a great rest of your day or evening or morning, and uh, I will see you again soon. Happy knitting. <laughs>